Hey, what's up guys? Brian Kelly from Zombie Guitar here. This is part two of the two-part series about how to play any chord on the guitar using just four shapes. So make sure to watch part one before watching part two, which is this. Otherwise, you might not understand what I'm talking about here. So uh, I will post links to part one below. I will post both the YouTube version and I will post the website version. So if you watch it from the website version, there's not going to be any ads in the videos and it will include a written lesson. But some people prefer to stay on YouTube if you're watching this video from YouTube. So I will also post the YouTube version of part one as well. But definitely check that out. So in part one, we talked about uh, just basic major chords and minor chords, how to play them anywhere on the neck using these four shapes. Then we looked at the four types of triads, minor, major, diminished, and augmented. So in this video, we're going to be looking at building seventh chords, sus chords, and extended chords. So that should cover any type of chord that you're ever going to encounter. All right, so let's look at some seventh chords here. So seventh chords are four note chords. In part one, we were just looking at three note chords, otherwise known as triads. So we looked at major triads in part one, otherwise known as just major chords. We looked at minor triads, otherwise just minor chords. Uh, we looked at diminished triads and augmented triads. So everything from part one contained just three notes. We're now looking at four note chords. So even though these starting shapes that we're starting with just have a one, three, and a five in there, we can still take these shapes, make the necessary manipulations, and turn them into these four note chords, these various different types of seventh chords. So there's uh, a couple of rules that uh, you should remember. And like I said, there is some memorization required here, but it's a lot easier to, to uh, remember a few simple rules than it is to try and remember, you know, five million different chord shapes. So here are the rules. Number one, uh, if you need to, you can drop the root, otherwise known as the one. So as you're trying to play some of these chord shapes, you know, you take your starting chord shape, you make your manipulations. Sometimes the shapes might be a little weird to play and you may not be able to fit all four notes in there. If that's the case, you can drop the one or drop the root, whatever you want to call it, one or root, same thing. So a lot of times if you're playing with a band, the bass player will be taking care of the root. Or if you don't have a bass player, but you have a keyboard player, the keyboard player will be taking care of the root. As a result, you as the guitar player, you can still play these chord shapes without the root. It's just known as a rootless version of the chord. So that's allowed. So if you need to do that, do that. Um, you don't have to, though. So the second rule is that if you need to drop the fifth, you can do that too. So unless it's a type of chord in which the fifth plays a, a key role in the chord, such as a diminished chord, like a diminished chord has a flat five in it, or an augmented chord, an augmented chord has a sharp five in it, or the chord symbol you know, specifically says blah, 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 sharp five, unless the five plays a key role in the chord, then you can drop it. So for these seventh chords, major seventh chords, minor seventh chords, dominant seventh chords, the five doesn't really play much of a key role. So you can drop the fifth if necessary. So that's the second rule. All right, so the third rule here with these seventh chords, and this is the one that confuses a lot of people. So there's two types of sevenths. There's major sevenths, and then there's sevenths. So a major seventh interval is always going to be found one half step below the root, or one half step below the one. A seven, the other type of seventh, not a major seventh, just a seven, otherwise referred to as a flat seven sometimes, otherwise referred to as a dominant seventh sometimes, the other type of seventh other than a major seventh is always going to be found one whole step below the root. So you have a major seventh, which is one half step below the root, and then you have a dominant seven or a seven or a flat seven. Those three names are interchangeable. That is found one whole step below the root. So um, those two different types of sevenths will always be indicated in the chord symbol. So the way that you can tell is if you see the word mage in a chord symbol, like D major seven, so you have a D major triad, you have a major seventh as indicated by the mage. If you do not see the word mage, then it is the other type of seventh. It's a dominant seventh, flat seventh, or just a seventh, whatever you want to call it. Those three names are interchangeable. So this may be a little confusing, but as I said, it's a lot easier to, to uh, understand these few rules than it is to remember a million different chord shapes. So with those rules, let's try and make some manipulations to these chords. All right, so let's start with this chord shape right here. This is a D major chord in the E shape. You see where your ones, threes, and fives are. 
So let's first make this uh, manipulation such that we have a D7 chord, otherwise known as a D dominant seventh chord. So a D dominant seventh chord has the, or just a dominant seventh chord has the chord formula one, three, five, flat seven. So um, a flat seven is one whole step lower than the one. So we just have to figure out how to get a flat seven into this chord shape. So I have a one here on the uh, low E string. I have a one here on the 12th fret of the D string and then a one here on the high E string. So the easiest way to get a note in there that is one whole step lower than the one would be to just take my pinky here and then lift it up. So D major then a D dominant seven. So now I'm getting this note in here. So just by lifting up my pinky, I added in that one note that is one whole step lower than the root. So that's a D dominant seven. So I could also take my pinky here, which is now available to play other notes, and I could add it here if I want to. 13th fret of the B string. So that note right there is also the flat seventh interval. How do I know that? Well, if this is my root up here on the high E string, if this is my one, one whole step lower than that is this note, which is the same as this note. So when I'm playing this uh, D dominant seventh chord shape and I want to do something with my pinky, I can throw the, the flat seven in right there too. So that is a D dominant seven chord. So let me now try to take this and uh, turn it into a D major seven chord. So here's uh, the starting shape. So let me just reduce this to the high four strings because that's allowed. I still have my one, my three, my five, and my one. So a major seven chord formula is one, three, five, seven. So a major seventh interval is always going to be found one half step below the one, or one half step below the root. So I have a root here, I have a root here. So I guess the easiest way would be to uh, add in the major seventh one half step below the root on the high E string, so right here. So I could play this chord like this. So that is a D major seven right there. So let me try to play a D minor seven chord. So I'm gonna start out with my basic shape right here, my D major chord in the E shape. So just looking at the chord symbol, uh, the D minor seven, it's a D minor triad and it has a seven. So it's not a major seven, it's just a seven. So when you see just a seven without the major in front of it, that's letting you know it's the type of seventh that is one whole step lower than the root. So I have to get a D minor chord plus that seven in there, that one whole step lower than the root note. So first let me turn this into a D minor chord. How do I do that? I take my third and I lower it by a half step. So there's my third, one half step lower, there's my minor. So now I have a D minor chord. All right, so now I have to get that seven note in there. So how do I get that seven in there? Um, that is one whole step lower than the root. So I already kind of figured this one out. Uh, in the first example, my pinky is the root. Lifting up my pinky will add in that note that is one whole step lower. So this is a D minor seven chord. And then from before, we already know that if you take your pinky and you add it right here, on the 13th fret here of the B string, that's also that same seventh. All right, so I can add in that note there too. So that's a D minor seven chord. So just by making these manipulations. So let me now um, do another shape here, which uh, will take the other rules into account where you might need to drop some notes and stuff like that. So I'm gonna start out with the C shape here. So let me play the D major chord in the C shape using my pinky to find the root. That's what you do for the C shape. So here's your uh, D major chord in the C shape. 
So let me just play just the high three strings. I'm gonna play the G, B, and the E string here, so. So let's say, so I have my root, I have my third, and I have my fifth. So this is technically an inversion, since my lowest note is no longer the root anymore. My lowest note is the fifth now. If I wanted to, I could add in the low D string here, because conveniently, because I'm playing a D type of chord, I happen to have the open D string available as well, but you're not always gonna have that luxury if you're playing the same shape for other types of chords. So let's just keep the, uh, the D string out of it for now. Let's just play just these high three strings. So I have my five, my one, and my three. So let's say I wanna play a D dominant seventh chord. So it's not a major seven, it's just a seven. So that means uh, one whole step lower than the one. So here's my one on the third fret of the B string. One whole step lower would be the first fret. So I could play this and this is a D seven chord. So this is a rootless, there's no root, but it's still fine. As I said, the rules, you can drop the root if you need to. So I have my five. I have that flat seven interval, and then I have my third. So let me try to take that same starting shape here and play a major seventh chord, so a D major seven. Major seven means that it's one half step lower than the one. So here's the one third fret of the B string, one half step lower is right here. So this is a D major seven. And as I said, conveniently, because this is a D type of chord, if I want to add the low D string in, I can. But you're not always going to have that luxury if you were playing some other type of rooted chord using the same shape. But just playing the high three strings, that's, that's fine too. That is a D major seven chord. The bass player will be taking care of the, uh, the root note. So there's that. Uh, let me now try to take that chord shape and turn it into a minor seven type of chord. So take our starting shape. So minor seven, D minor seven. There's no mage in the chord symbol. So that lets me know it's the seven that is one whole step lower than the root. Not a major seven, just a seven. So first I uh, have to make this into a minor chord. So I do that by lowering the third. So now we have a D minor chord. And then I have to add in that seven. So here's my one right here, third fret of the B string. A seven is one whole step lower. It's not a major seven, it's just a seven, otherwise known as a flat seven. So that's right there. So this is a D minor seven chord. That's just a few examples of how you can make these major sevenths, these minor sevenths, and these dominant seventh chords by just taking those rules and then just making these manipulations. All right, so you can always drop the root, you can always drop the fifth, and then just know which type of seventh it is. Is it a major seventh that you're adding to the chord, or is it a seventh that you're adding to the chord? A major seventh, one half step lower. Seventh, one whole step lower. And when you see the chord formula, if it says one, three, five, seven, that seven is a major seven. I know that's the confusing part. That seven is a major seven, that's one half step below the root. If it says one, three, five, flat seven, that's the seven that's one whole step below the root. So you may have to watch this section a few times uh, for it to really sink in if, if you're new to this kind of stuff. But if you follow those rules and you take these starting shapes and make the manipulations, you can play seventh chords anywhere on the entire neck. So that's sevenths. Let's now look at sus chords. All right, so sus chords are much easier than seventh chords and much easier than extended chords. Sus chords are just three note chords. Just like we looked at in part one, everything had just three notes in it. Sus chords have just three notes. So what a sus chord is, is a triad that drops the third and then replaces it with either a two or a four. So a two can always be found one whole step below the three. A four can always be found one half step above the three. So if you just take a major triad anywhere on the entire neck of the guitar and you have your one, your three, and your five, you want to turn that into a sus chord, if you want to turn it into a sus two, 
you would get rid of the 3 and replace it with a 2, which is one whole step lower than the 3. If you want to take your major triad and turn it into a sus 4, you just drop the 3 and you replace it with a 4, which is one half step higher than the 3. So that's all sus chord is. So let's uh, try to play some sus chords. I'm not going to do a million examples because I want you to kind of do this stuff for yourself. Take these starting shapes, try these manipulations for yourself, see what you come up with. And once you get the correct chord, you're going to hear it. So once you play a sus chord correctly, you're going to be like, oh, yep, that's the one. So I'm only going to give a few examples. So let's say we want to uh, make manipulations to, we'll try the A shape, for example. So uh, let's start out with our D major chord in the A shape. So we have our 1, 5, 1, 3, and 5. So let's just play the high three strings here to uh, make this a little easier. So we have our 1, we have our 3, and we have our five. So one, three, five. So let's say I want to play a D sus two chord. So a sus two chord means I eliminate the three and replace it with a two. A two is always going to be one whole step lower than the three. So if I remove my pinky and then I instead play these two strings with my index finger or my first finger. So there's a D sus two chord. Let's try to play a D sus four chord. So here is um, the uh, one, three, and five. So I want to uh, elim eliminate the third and then add a fourth, which is one half step higher than the third. So this is a D sus four chord. So that's, um, that's all sus, sus chords are. You have sus twos, you have sus fours, you get rid of the third, you replace it with a two for a sus two, or you replace it with a four for a sus four. That's all sus chords are. The final thing we're going to talk about in this two-part series here is the extended chords. So extended chords are things like nines, elevens, thirteens, things like that. So this is arguably the hardest part of the whole two-part series, but it's not that hard if you've been able to follow along up until now. So there is some rules to remember. Yes, I will have all the rules and everything in the written lesson that comes with this video. If you're on YouTube, that link will be below. If you're already on the Zombie Guitar website, you can just scroll down the page and uh, read the written lesson. All of the stuff that I'm about to talk about right now will be contained in the written lesson. So there's some rules to uh, understand about extended chords, and that'll make your life a lot easier when it comes to making these manipulations to these basic starting shapes. So we already talked about the fact that you can drop the root if you need to. You can drop the fifth if you need to. Again, if uh, if it's a chord in which the fifth plays a predominant role, like a diminished chord, or if the chord symbol specifically states sharp five in it or flat five in it, if the fifth plays a, a crucial role, then you may not want to drop the fifth, but a lot of times the fifth can be dropped. So, um, Unless otherwise stated, assume that you can drop the fifth. So you can drop the root, you can drop the fifth. Um, the seventh rule still applies to extended chords. So if the chord symbol says mage in it, that means the seventh is a major seventh. If the chord symbol does not say mage in it, that means the seventh that is in there is not a major seventh. It's the other type of seventh. It's a dominant seventh, a flat seven, just a seven. All right, so that mage always applies to the seventh. All right, so there's those rules. So the next rule is where do these nines, 11s, and 13s come from? Well, they come from the two octave scale. So previously, we've, we've only been looking at chords that require the first octave of the scale, major triads, minor triads, any other type of triad, or seventh chords, because the one octave scale contains seven notes. So everything is a D-rooted type of chord that we're looking at in this lesson. Therefore, everything is derived from the D major scale. So up until now, we've only needed to use one octave of the D major scale. But if you want to add a 9 or an 11 or a 13 or something like that, then you need to look at two octaves of the D major scale. So if you write out two octaves of the D major scale, you put them back to back, and you want to play, say, a D add 9. So you have to figure out what your 9 is. So a D add 9 means it's a D major triad, which is the 1, 3, and 5 of the scale. 
D, F sharp, and A. And then you want to add the 9. So what is the 9? You have to count up 9 notes until you arrive at your 9, which is the note E. So D add 9 contains the notes D, F sharp, A, and E, which is the add 9. Same thing would be for an 11. Same thing would be for a 13. You just figure out what your 11 or 13 is by counting through the two octave scale. And then another thing that might be helpful as you're making these chord manipulations is to understand that the 9 is the same thing as the 2. All right, it's just the two octave scale we're looking at. So the 9 and the 2 are the same note. And then the 11 and the 4 are the same note. And then the 13 and the 6 are the same note. So the reason that it's called a 13 or 11 or a 9 instead of, you know, the 2, 4, or 6 is because the 2, 4, and 6 are reserved for other types of chords. So a sus chord like we talked about previously, a sus 2 or a sus 4, that's where you drop the third and then add the two or add the four. But these extended chords have the third in there already. So you have your root, your third, and your fifth. But then you're adding in these other uh, higher notes. All right. So twos, fours, and sixes are reserved for other types of chords. Um, and then nines, elevens, and thirteens are reserved for what is known as extended chords. So... That's that. Um, the next thing to understand is that uh, an extended chord has every other lower odd number interval in the chord name implied. So if you see, uh, let's say you see a D major 9. So D major 9, you have here D major triad, D, F sharp, and A. You see the word mage in the chord symbol. So you have a major 7th in there. And then you have a 9. So that means you're adding in that 9 as well. If you see a D major 11, that's saying you have your D major triad. You see the word mage in there, so it's the major 7th is in there. You know the 11's in there because that's in the chord symbol. But it's also implied that the 9's in there too. So every odd numbered interval is also implied. All right. So if you see a D13, so a D13, that's going to have a D major triad. There's no mage, so that means it's just a 7. Not a major 7, just a 7. But then it's implied that the 9 is there, and the 11 is there, and the 13 is there. So all that stuff is implied. But you can drop a lot of those notes too. So that's another one of these things about extended chords. So not only can you drop the root, not only can you drop the 5th, but you can drop all those other odd implied uh, intervals too. You can add them if you want but you don't have to. So if I wanted to play a D13 chord, I have my D major triad, I have my 7, not a major 7, just a 7, because there's no major in the symbol. I have my 9, I have my 11, and I have my 13. I will, I will ask myself, okay, what can I drop? I could drop the root if I want, I could drop the 5th if I want, and I can drop the 9 and the 11th if I want. So the only things I have left are my 3rd, my 7th, and my 13th. So those are like the key tones. So if I find that maybe I prefer the sound of this chord with the root in there, all right, no problem, throw that, that root back in there. If I find I like the sound of this chord with maybe the 5th in there, or maybe keep the ninth in there or whatever, I can do that too, but you don't have to. So you can always drop, you know, you can always drop these uh, extra tones. So it would actually be physically impossible to play a D13 since you have seven notes. You have uh, one, the root, third, fifth, seven, nine, eleven. So it's seven notes, but you only have six strings. So you physically couldn't even play all of the notes on the guitar. You could do it on the piano, but you couldn't even play all the notes on the guitar. So you have to drop some notes. So understand which notes you know you can drop. And that's how you play extended chord. So uh, let's try to just play a few of these, and then I'm just going to kind of end this lesson and leave it up to you to try and play your own. So let's start out with this shape right here, D major in the E shape. Let's just play the high four strings. So let's say I want to play a D add 9. All right, so D add 9. I have to know that the 9, the 9 and the 2 are the same thing. All right, so... So I already know that uh, here's one, here's two, here's three, 
So I know that my two is uh, one whole step lower than the three. I know my two is also one whole step higher than the one. So anywhere I have a one, I can just kind of add that nine in there or add the two when it's, it's, it's called the nine because it's not a sus chord where we're keeping the third in there. So that's why we're calling it nine instead of two. So I just go and I add that in there. All right, so let me just do one more here. So I'm gonna start out with this shape. You can either call it the G shape if you want, or you can call this the A shape. So because I'm just gonna be using these three notes as my starting point. So I have my root, my third, and my fifth. So I wanna to try to make a D13 chord. All right, so a D13 chord. So what do I know about a D13 chord? I know that it has a D major triad in it because it doesn't say D minor, it just says D13. So it has a D major triad, D, F sharp, and A. Um, there is no mage in the chord symbol. So that means the type of seventh that is in here is gonna be the other type of seventh, the type of seventh that is one whole step below the root. So I have that, I have a D, F sharp, A, and then I have you know the note that's one whole step lower than the root, um, which happens to be the note C. Uh, so I have that, I can drop the 9, I can drop the 11, the chord symbol says 13 in there, so I don't want to drop the 13, so let's see how I can figure this stuff out. So I have my uh, root, my 1, I have my 3, and I have my 5. So if I want to drop the root, that's fine, so let me replace the root with uh, that 7th interval, that flat 7, that dominant 7 that other type of seventh other than a mage. So here's the uh, D7 portion of it. And then I just have to get that 13 in there somehow. So what is the 13? So 13 is um, the same thing as a six. So if I have to go back to my D major scale pattern to figure that out, that's fine. So let me just play my D major scale pattern. So that's my sixth note right there. Six and 13 are the same note. All right, so I have to get that note in there right there. That happens to be the note B. So here's a B here. Here's a B here up on the seventh fret. So that B is close to where I'm at. So that's the note I have to get in there. That's the 13. So I have my, um, I have my starting point right here, which is the uh, dominant seventh chord structure. And then I'm putting that 13 in there too. So that would be a D13 chord. So it has the fifth, it has that flat seven, that dominant seven, that other than major seven, the other type of seventh interval in there. So fifth, five, flat seven, uh, three, and then it has the 13. So I don't have the root in there. I don't have the nine or the 11 in there because they can be dropped, but I do have the 13. So this would uh, suffice for a D13 chord. All right, so you see how I'm doing this stuff? So you can figure this stuff out on your own. And the more you do it, the more you go and figure this stuff out, you know, the easier it becomes. So that last step that I did there when I went and referred to the uh, D major scale, remember, everything comes from, this, from the major scale. So if you're trying to figure out some sort of a C type of chord, you know, like a C11 or something like that, and you want to figure out what the 11 is and you don't know it off the top of your head well you look at your c major scale you play your c major scale figure out what the 11 is you can either look at the scale in two octaves or you can just kind of remember okay two and nine are the same thing four and 11 are the same thing 13 and six are the same thing so you can kind of remember that play your major scale figure out what that one note is that you're trying to get in there and then find where that note is, wherever you happen to be on the fretboard, all right? So I figured out that. I figured out that I needed to get that B in there. All right, so I was here in this area. So I'm like, okay, where's the B at near me? Oh, there's a B right there, seventh fret of the high E string. I need to get that in there. That's that 13, six, 13, same thing. I need to get that in there. Add that in addition to all the other rules, major seven or regular seven, drop the root, drop the fifth, 
drop other un unneeded uh, notes, and I was able to come up with my D13 chord. So, that's extended chords. Like I said, it's a little bit more complicated than what we've been doing up until now, but it's not too bad if you understand how the process works. So hopefully that was uh, able to uh, help you guys out a little bit with uh, coming up with these chords on your own. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to uh, let me know. Leave them below. Whatever. Hit me up in the Facebook group. I'm available every day to uh, help people out the best I can. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.